Hello and welcome to anubotrainings.com. In this video series, we are discussing about how to automate your Fiori applications end-to-end -end using regression automated testing. By far in the sessions, we have discussed about traceability and end-to-end -end automation of a master detailed Fiori app, including capturing of messages and also the cross-browser testing. In this session, we will talk about test results with assertion. Many a times, whenever you are designing your test, you wanted to make sure that your test should fail only when there is a true application error. So, whenever there's an application error, you wanted to throw an appropriate message to tell the reason of why did the test fail. Now, in Java, assert is one of the prominent techniques which you can use to inform to the console that what went wrong during the execution. Now, the exceptions can be, for example, you're trying to click on a button and the button got disappeared. This is a defect. So you have to inform the user or the tester that the button is not available on the screen or the element is not available on the screen. Or sometimes you are expecting a sales order to be created and a success message to come. Now, if the success message does not appear, that also should be considered as a defect, which means something might have gone wrong during the application under test when it was being executed by regression test and the message did not come. So all these can be coded with the assertion. So let's go back to our application logic which we have built. I have shared all this source code with you in the description of the current video. You can go and find this complete source code out there. So what's happening currently is we are throwing this, uh, this success message or the application is throwing this success after the successful completion. So what we can do is, right after this, we can check this message. Maybe we can take it in a string variable. And I can say, occurred message. So this is the message which occurred. And I can create another variable called expected message. And that's where I'm gonna code this particular message. Now, if these messages are not matching, I'm gonna show an exception. So we can say assert dot strict equals we can put. So we can put different options. So you can see there are different asserts here. So we can say assert equals two strings we are comparing. And based on that, we are going to tell the message. So let's come here for an assert string comparison. And what is my expected message? This is my expected message. What is my occurred message? This is my occurred message. And here is where I'm going to go and tell uh, that the expected message did not occur. Yeah. So this way you can have the proper error handling and exact error messages coming up. Sometimes it may so happen that element itself is not available. The message did not even come. So even this call will fail. So in that case, you can go to the method called wait for control. And here is where you can do exception handling. So what you can do is just put this block of code where you're waiting under a try catch. Okay, so let's do that. We can just do a try catch. So if it times out, then it's gonna always trigger my try catch. So let's put this entire code under a try catch. And now here we can also say assert. And I can say assert equals, uh, maybe I can put two numbers with the message. And I can say message is my element was not available. And I can just make sure that this assert always fails when exception triggers and we'll get to know more information. So I can also additionally append the element ID or the identifier which we passed so whatever identifier we are passing, we can just also say the property name and, and also the, the, the so-called property value. So you can just pass this property name and property value. So property name and property value. So looking for this property with property value is this. So that's how you'll get to know what went wrong in the 
application under test. So let's go ahead and try to uh, run our application in a way that fails or with a negative use case and then hopefully we should get our test result expected. So what I'm going to do is rather than generating this random product ID, I'm going to return a product ID which already exists maybe. Yeah. So this is what I'll do. I'll just say return. And I'm going to return right away here a product ID which is let's say ATS180 which is I guess already there and just can do that here. Comment out this for time being just to check if this works or not. So now the message itself won't come. So uh, in that case, it is gonna go and wait for my message and it's gonna time out and gonna give you the error which you are expecting. Let's execute. Or sometimes you are stuck on the logon page at that time. You can also additionally take screenshots uh, whenever something is wrong, you can also capture a screenshot of the screen. What was the state of the screen during the time of error? So with the assert, you can also capture the screenshot. So let's see what it does now. It clicks on plus button, enters a product. I hope this product already there. Oh, it's not there. So this time it my test case passed actually. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe I'm going to run this same test case one more time so that we can actually see that this product ID since it's already there it's gonna not produce the expected error so that was a positive case and now it's a negative case because the product already there system will fail this and my expected message won't come so it will wait for message to come and then throw an exception and then we can see the console whether it has reported the element not found or not so plus it enters the data and clicks on save and now see the another message is coming but my expected message did not come so as expected it is going to wait for 20 seconds and then it's going to time out and it will exactly tell you the cause of failure over here because we have handled that exception uh, properly yeah, during the wait and now you can see element was not available and it was looking for an X path for this type of element with a class name message toast. This is what we have coded in one of the session and that's more uh, better readable information for a tester to look at what went wrong while your test was executing. This is always important and very much needed for anybody who is automating so that you exactly know where what went wrong which step what went wrong so with that it's a wrap on today's session i hope you enjoyed this session as usual please feel free to like share and subscribe this video with your colleagues and i will see you in the next video